I'm so glad you reached out to me because, you know, now that I work from home, having a nice environment for a home studio is everything. So and I'm so glad that I can share my knowledge with here for you today. I want to talk to you about uh, equipment and what it what what kind of specs do you actually like need to know in order to even purchase a microphone and purchase a camera and how to get away with it without actually having to spend so much money. Um, and, and then second part, which is next week, I'll be doing the actual recording part in my bedroom. We'll be walking, I'll be walking you through how to, you know, plug in your mics and set your, your microphone, your camera to make sure they all sound good and look good. And then on the third uh, week, which is the last part, is the post-production part. I want to show you uh, the, the stage of after you record. What, what do you do with all this content? How do you put it together in one single video? I'm not here to give you a list of what's good and what's bad, because there's so many out there in the market. But what is important is to know the quality before you buy it. So you should test it before you make the commitment. So, so the iPhone 6S, it says that it can shoot 12 megapixels 1080p at 120 frames per second. This is actually really good. <laughs> Not bad for an old, old iPhone success. So let's see. So I filmed myself do this a little bit. I want to um, show you what it looks like. Okay. So I want to go back to where I was waving. Okay. See how it's very blurry? It's not as clear. Also, the color of the frame itself is very what's the word it's over it's overexposed it's very unclear that's the that's my quality of the iPhone right there so now let's compare it with um, my Sony camera this guy is 18 megapixels 1080 60p what does this look like yeah so already it's much clearer. I don't know if people can see. And also, if you have any questions, please feel free to intrude. I want to, you know, get involved with what you are thinking. But um, this, I, from what I see, is that this has a lot clearer um, image. The contrast between the door color and the, the wall is very clear. It's a lot less exposed. And when I waved, you could actually see the details of my fingers. I want to talk about audio now. It's my favorite part. Equipment, microphones. Let's talk about microphones. Here is two big groups that we can consider of microphones. There's dynamic and there's condenser microphones. We also hear the term ribbon microphones. That's, it's an extra, it's, it's extra fragile, I'll say, and it's usually commonly mo the most expensive out of three, so I'm just gonna erase that for now. Let's talk about these two main things. So what's the difference and why is it actually important? Um, so as we discussed, microphones are devices that capture these sound waves that are happening around it and, into, and creates that into electrical signals. So the main difference of, between a dynamic and a condenser mic is the way it, it's built differently and therefore they do the conversion of this differently. So I wanna talk about USB mics a little bit. I'm actually using one right now. This, I'm using the Audio-Technica, okay, I don't wanna, destroy it so much, but yeah. So this is the Audio-Technica microphone. It's the ATR 2500X. It's, it works really great. I hope I'm, I sound good because uh, it's, yeah. So um, yeah, let's take, a, let's take a look at what this, uh, the specs for this microphone is. I'm gonna bring it up. Okay, so this Audio-Technica, it says that it's a cardioid. Um, Okay, so it's a cardioid condenser USB mic that records up to 24-bit uh, with 192 kilohertz sampling rate. Okay, let's break all of that. That's very tech all technical terms. So let's start with the term cardioid. Okay, so the term cardioid refers to the polar pattern of the microphone. And the polar pattern is, there's multiple uh, polar patterns out there, but what it is, it's basically, it's the uh, move, it's the, it's the, it refers to the shape and the direction of which the microphone is capturing the sound. So let's go back to the specs. So we got cardioid, condenser USB mic. I, that... Actually, Sarah, I'm going to interrupt. Yeah, you. We do please. have a question. What if you have one instrument which is a grand piano? So one <laughs> instrument, but it's it's not a single point source. What yeah. do, you, do you recommend cardioid in this case or omni? So a piano is <laughs> it's very challenging. And it's actually, even in classical recording, piano is always a challenge to record because 
usually with a single microphone, it's hard to capture all frequencies that I can do, like all the low ends and the high ends. So a standard uh, recording for a uh, piano is actually using two microphones and kind of having it on a stand, like a stereo bar, so that the one side is capturing the treble, treble clef, the higher end, and the other is on the bass end. And so that's a really great way. And they're actually both in cardioid, so that they're focused on each sections. But let's say you have a nice hall, you have a nice practice room that's really, really echoing, it's really beautiful. Um, maybe it is an option to use an omni mic in that case, because you want the overall sound instead of one point and also utilize the room. But let's say you have a practice room that isn't sounding as good, but you have to still have a piano. I think the better way to go around that, because you don't want so much of the room sound, is getting a cardioid. And instead of placing it so close, kind of stepping it away and putting it further and higher up so that it's kind of getting the general sound more than just a specific point. We talked about the, all the good things about USB mic. Now I want to talk a little bit about the downside of it, just so that we can have perspectives of it. The downside of having a USB mic is two things. One is if you're looking into record multiple things, like let's say an ensemble with multiple instrument, with, uh, sorry, with multiple microphones, it's going to be hard. You can't plug in two USB mics into your computer and expect them to both work at the same time. Let's say you want to advance further into it. That's when you use the XLR cables with an interface. So this is an example of an interface. So this is a Focusrite 2i2. Um, this is a standard audio interface because it's got an input, which is a microphone input where you can plug in your cable, and it has an output of a USB. There's a little signal there. So I can just plug this simply into here, and then this can go into my laptop. So it's not as complicated, but it's still another extra step. But by doing this, you can actually have flexible control over each uh, volume of your microphone and the overall uh, level of your, what you're listening to. And so you have all the controls in one single device without having to, you know, if you're plugging in a USB into your computer, you'll have to do all the settings within your computer. And that's, it's, it gets a little complicated. But if you have a single device that can do everything, like an interface, that saves so much work for you.